back to another edition of TCM Graduate TV. I'm Kenton Sefcik, registered acupuncturist. This is episode 100. First off, I just wanna thank each and every one of you for watching my videos. I never thought in a million years that I would make it to my 100th video. And I know I said it on my 20th podcast, I couldn't believe I would hit 20 podcast episodes, but if you want to do something, if you wanna share your passion with the world, just go look at my video one, two, three, four, five on TCM Graduate TV on YouTube, and then look at today, and there is no way that I had this amount of bravado, confidence. I was able to show this amount of passion at that time. Here we are, episode 100. Today I wanna to get into differentiation and diagnosis. I've been wanting to do this. I've been wanting to save it for a special occasion, and I think a 100th episode is a darn good occasion to talk about how to differentiate, how to diagnose difficult case studies. Differentiation and diagnosis is a four-step process. Let's get into it. The first thing we need to do is we need to look at our eight principles. And what I mean by eight principles is the first thing we have to find out is this condition interior or exterior related. The next thing we have to find out is it excess or deficiency. Is it a hot or cold condition? And is it all yin or all yang? So that's step one is eight principle diagnosis and differentiation. The next step, step two, is chi blood body fluids. And what we're going to do is we have to remember our terminology. Certain words such as deficiency, stagnation, heat, they go together with other terms. So for example, we can say chi deficiency and we can say blood deficiency. We can say heat in the blood, but we can't say heat in the chi. So we have to memorize these concepts, especially when it gets to the Zong Fu diagnosis, which is actually number three, which we're gonna get into, with some case studies, but it's important to remember this. So in regards to general chi, we're gonna say, is it deficient? Is it rebellious? Is it stagnant? Those sorts of things. Blood, is it deficient? Is it stagnant? Is there heat in the blood? Those sorts of things. With body fluids, what we're talking about is, is there a body fluid deficiency? such as a yin deficiency, or is there dampness and or phlegm? The third step, which I already mentioned, is zong fu. Again, memorizing the terminology is very, very important. So with zong fu, again, we talk about liver blood deficiency, but we don't talk about spleen blood deficiency. Those, ter those terms, they don't go together. Again, memorizing the terms that go together within an organ system is super important and will help you throughout your entire Chinese medicine career. Song Fu is also what we use primarily for TCM style acupuncture. It's how we diagnose, get to our herbs, and how we get to our point prescriptions. Last but not least, This category is called other. So with other, what we're doing is we can look at, if you own, I own the first edition of Foundations of TCM by Matt Chocha. The whole book is like Zong Fu, and then there's like four pages at the back that talk about five element, uh, four level, and six stage, and that's exactly what this is. Sometimes we like to describe ter diagnostics in terms of wood overacting on earth, or maybe there's a fire water imbalance, that would be five element. Again, I said maybe six stages, maybe we're using that terminology to describe the health phenomenon that's going on with our patient. 
And of course, we also have four level. Maybe you go to a school that uses different diagnostics, such as Kiko Matsumoto palpatory style, uh, could be some form of like, maybe it's a Japanese style acupuncture, and you were primarily a TCM person, and then you could add in, that could be kind of your other diagnosis. However, we'll stick to these three, which is kind of what we pick and choose from, from a TCM style acupuncture, which is again, the Bruce Lee of acupuncture, just steal from everything, so you get the best from everything, and then just make this awesome thing. All right, going to erase this and we're going to get into an actual case study. I've got a couple of them I want to share with you and we will break it down according to a principle, qi blood body fluids, zhong fu, and other. And then we're going to come up with a point prescription based on that information. Chief complaint, fever. Tongue, slightly red body, thin, white, rather moist coating. So slightly red, totally normal. Thin white coating, but it's a little moist. Squeezing that word moist right in there. Pulse, floating and a little tight. All right, let me read this case study to you and then we're gonna do our differentiation and diagnosis. Two day history of fever. The patient was exposed to cold in the course of a business trip. He felt cold and had an aversion to cold. His temperature was 38.6 degrees Celsius. There was nasal obstruction and watery nasal discharge. An absence of sweating, no sore throat, but a slight cough with some white sputum. Also generalized aching. He was not thirsty. His appetite was slightly poor. Urination bowels were normal. All right, so let's look at this from an eight principle standpoint. Now, I always look at interior, exterior first. So this condition is likely what? It's like a wind, cold, wind, heat sort of thing. It's an invasion. Where did the invasion come from? It came from outside, so this is external. Why is this so important? Well, I'm likely going to try to release exterior with acupuncture points such as GB20, LI4, Lung 7, Triple Warmer 5. If it's more interior, I'm not going to use those acupuncture points most likely. The patient is complaining that they were exposed to cold, that they feel cold and have an aversion to cold. So there's a pretty good chance this is not a heat or hot condition, this is cold. So we've got interior, exterior, we've got hot and cold, Let's look at excess and deficiency. So what we have is some nasal obstruction, watery nasal discharge, absence of sweating, generalized aching, slight cough. This one's really, really tricky because maybe we could say that their lungs were deficient, so they caught a wind cold or a wind heat. Obviously more on the wind cold side here, but we could also say they have these mucus discharge and that would be kind of an excess. So it's okay to have hot and cold at the same time. It's okay to have a excess deficiency and it's okay to have a yin yang at the same time. We're gonna get into that. So this one is a little bit excess, a little bit deficiency, same time. Now, how we get into yin and yang typically, the way I like to do it, is is it all yin and all or all yang, and then I'll call it yin or yang. So we've got extra, external invasion, exterior, 
that would be more yang. We've got cold, which is yin, and we have an excess and deficiency kind of thing going on. And so we've got yin and yang. So for example, if we had an external invasion that was hot and it was in excess, we would call it yang. If we had an internal invasion that was cold and it was deficiency, we would call it all yin. Hopefully that makes sense to you. So again, it's okay to have a combination of, of both. So that's your eight principle. Already, again, starting to think external invasion, gonna start wanting to release exterior and get rid of that wind cold. We've got excess and deficiency going on, so we could tonify the lung and we've got some extra white sputum. Uh, I think it said here, yeah, so nasal obstruction, so nasal uh, discharge probably, and yin and yang. So a principle, the next thing we're going to look at is chi blood body fluids. So I've got B dot F dot, so that's for body fluids. So in order to catch a cold, you usually have to have some sort of like chi deficiency. So is the chi within excess? Is there chi stagnation? No, but there might be a slight chi deficiency. Did the case study talk about blood at all? No, there's no heat in the blood. There's no bleeding nose. Uh, we don't, we're not talking about skin eruptions or anything like that. We're not talking about the patient not being able to sleep at night and having crazy dreams. There's no inkling of what's going on with the blood. However, with body fluids, again, we've got some nasal obstruction, watery nasal discharge, and slight cough with white sputum. There's no talk of every patient being very dry, dry cracked heels. Maybe they have uh, other dry things like dry eyes. That's where we would say, oh, you probably have a yin deficiency of a fluid deficiency. In this case, we actually have phlegm. We actually have too much body fluid. So that's how we look at that. So we did our A principle. We did our qi blood body fluid. Now we're gonna talk about our zong fu. So here, of course, we have an invasion of wind cold and the most superficial organ is the lung. Wind cold, wind dash seed, wind cold, and then LU for lung. There also might be an inkling again of maybe some, we could say maybe a little bit of spleen sheet efficiency. Again, these case studies are for arguing sake. So I'm just giving it to you. But how we would usually do this in a classroom when I use these case study sheets is you would write down all the things that you think and then we would have a fight about it in class and we would learn from each other. And that's what's really, really important. So somebody might say, yeah, for sure, we got a wind cold invasion, invade in the lungs, causing some issues. We might have a little bit of spleen sheet efficiency. Uh, we might have a little bit of lung sheet efficiency. That's a possibility because of all this sputum and that sort of thing. Uh, appetite is poor. You might say, well, that's due to the wind cold. Uh, you also might say that's due to spleen sheet deficiency. So that would be an option for you. And I would back you up if you wanted to fight me on putting that on the, on the board right now. So in terms of other, we could say that we have an invasion at the uh, Taeyong level. So six stage. We could also say that we have an invasion at the Wei level. in terms of four levels. So that's how we could plunk that in. There's not really anything going on from a five element point of view, the way we use that terminology. And here we have some really good ideas on how we can help the patient now. So now that we have our differentiation and we're starting to get close to a diagnosis, we can make an actual TCM diagnosis. So we're gonna take some information here and most likely in a case study, we're gonna be looking at the Zong Fu for the most part. So here we have a wind cold invasion in the lungs. Looking at all this other information, 
Again, you could maybe argue there's a little bit of like lung chi deficiency, spleen chi deficiency. Again, I'll give it to you if you want it. So lung and spleen chi deficiency. Then what we can do is create a treatment plan or treatment principle. So what we always want to do, do you remember the chief complaint that was up here? The chief complaint was fever. So what we have to do is we have to treat the fever. The chief complaint, if the patient comes in and they have all these signs and symptoms, and you look at the tongue and you go, wow, what a crazy tongue and what a crazy pulse, and they've got hip bursitis, and that's their chief concern, you gotta treat their hip bursitis. So always focusing on what the patient wants is number one. So we gotta focus on this fever, and then what we can do is we can look at the wind cold invasion, So what we're gonna do is we're gonna expel the pathogen. We're gonna open up exterior. We're gonna release the, the wind and the cold and get rid of it. All those terms that we can use for to describe that. And then we can also look at all the other symptoms. So maybe like the nasal discharge and the slight cough. So relieve nasal discharge. We can choose many, many acupuncture points, but we always want to choose the heavy hitters and we don't want to bombard the patient with too many acupuncture points because it's like someone coming into your office and asking you to for a request and you say, no problem. You get three people come in and they ask all at the same time. Mm, might be able to manage this. All of a sudden, 20 people coming in and asking different things. So my acupuncture point prescriptions are always cohesive and I don't use too many acupuncture points again because it's like too many people coming into your office. So wind cold invasion in the lung. So we need to expel the pathogen. For wind cold, I like to use GB20, LF4, and a lung seven kind of combination. Now, fever is often treated with an LI4 triple warmer five. And there's nothing wrong with triple warmer five here as well, because it will actually open up the pores and ask the pathogen to leave. It's like opening up the door and asking a uh, belligerent guest to leave out of your house. So that can help with that. Fever, LI4, so fever is heat. So we can look at some heat acupuncture points. The three best acupuncture points are LI4, LI11, DU14. So there we have, we're taking care of the fever, we're taking care of the wind cold invasion. Let's look at relieving some nasal discharge. So LI20 would be good. Of course, GB20 is great for any EENT concerns, so that's really good there. Extra head, neck, three, yin tong. That would be quite good. And you could use other acupuncture points such as Bitong, that would be fine. So we've got some things here. So now what about that cough and that sputum? Well, Ren 22 is good for stopping cough. Extra uh, back one, extra B1. Ding Chuan, stop cough, that's another good one. So we're already starting to think, and a little bit of sputum. So we might want to drain damp and transform phlegm. So I've got a spleen nine stomach 40 combination there. Looking at back now, of course we can do that. We can start thinking about UB13. We can start thinking about all the things that we can do for our patients. So maybe we'd like to do some moxa on UB13 because it's a wind cold. Maybe we would like to do some cupping. So here we have everything that we would really, really like to do. Maybe you'd like to say, well, I really want to treat that uh, lung chi deficiency with a lung nine. Maybe you'd like spleen six, stomach 36 combo in the mix. Maybe you argue, well, if it's a back treatment, I'm gonna use UB2021 for back, shoe of spleen and stomach respectively. 
And then we can start picking and choosing some of our favorite acupuncture points, our heavy hitters, and that is how we finally get to our point prescription for a patient. This is the long way. This is the way we use it when we're learning and or if we have a really, really heavy case study and we just it's blowing our minds and we don't know how to get through it. We can use our four stage uh, differentiation and diagnosis. We can make a diagnosis, we can make a treatment plan on the chief concerns, etc., and some of the secondary concerns, and that gets us to our acupuncture points. Let's look at one more case study. This next case study, chief complaint is abdominal pain. The tongue is pale with a thick white and moist coating. And the pulse is wiry and thin. going to read the case study to you and again we're going to break this down according to eight principle chi blood body fluids zong fu and other the patient has experienced recurrent attacks of upper and middle abdominal pain for the last three years the pain is accompanied by a distending sensation so bloating or feeling of fullness or, or feeling, uh, feeling of falling that can radiate to both hypochondriac areas okay so you're not a hypochondriac it's the below the rib cage area, the hypochondria. When the pain becomes severe, the patient can experience nausea, excessive watery saliva, and a tendency to vomit. His appetite is very poor, and when he does eat, the abdominal distension becomes worse, and he suffers from indigestion. He does not feel especially thirsty, but he can experience intense fatigue. His stools are watery and loose. He has two to three bowel movements daily. His urination is normal. He had an upper gastrointestinal study with barium and was diagnosed as having a duodenal ulcer. He is very emaciated and his lips are pale. So let's start with our eight principle. So remember, if the case study or your patient comes in with a wind cold, a wind heat, a wind damp cold, a wind damp heat, etc. It's exterior. It's external. That's the only time we use it. Can somebody have external and exterior and interior things going on at the same time? For sure. But in these cut and dry case studies, the only time I'm going to say exterior is wind cold, wind heat, etc. This is obviously a Zong Fu thing. We're going to probably nail this thing with a Zong Fu diagnosis. It is interior. Now, is it excess or is it deficiency? Well, we've got pain and we've got distending sensations and we've got feelings in the hypochondria and we have a tendency to vomit. I mean, these things seem pretty, pretty excess to me. But wait, we've got pale lips and a pale tongue and the pulse is wiry, but it's a little thin still. And we've got indigestion, intense fatigue, watery stool, loose. That sounds like deficiency as well. So there again, we have another case of excess and deficiency. So looking at, is it, is it cold or hot? Well, I think we're definitely more on the cold side. We've got a pale tongue, lips are pale, and we've got watery loose stool, and things just seem a little bit more cold than they do hot. There's generally no heat signs here. So we've got interior excess and deficiency and cold. Well, remember, if this was interior deficiency cold, we could say full yin all the way. But because we have an excess and deficiency, it's a little bit of yin and a little bit of yang. Let's look at chi blood body fluids. Well, 
We've got some cheese stagnation, that's for sure. And we can kind of skip ahead and say we have some liver cheese stagnation. We know we've got pain in the hypochondriac. And I'm sure you already know what's kind of going on with this case study, but again, so you might have to look to the Dong Fu just briefly in your mind and go, well, yeah, liver cheese stagnation. That's what I kind of figure that's probably going on. Okay, so there's definitely cheese stagnation. What happens with liver cheese stagnation is it often picks on digestion. We know this. So it's likely picking on the digestion because we have a spleen chi deficiency. So we also have chi deficiency. We also have perversion. Remember, perversion means the chi is going in the wrong, di wrong direction. We have vomiting. We have chi going in the wrong direction. So we have perversion of chi. In regards to blood, there's no mention of blood here. So we're not going to worry about blood. Again, if we had a patient talking about how they have amenorrhea, we might diagnose this as, we say, well, there's blood deficiency. We might write that down, but we don't have anything like that here. Now, in regards to body fluids, we've got watery stool. So we have some dampness. There's no yin deficiency sign. There's no water deficiency signs per se, but we definitely have some kind of retention of, of, of dampness. And there's also excessive watery saliva. So again, kind of dampness sort of thing. So we've kind of taken care of that. Qi blood body fluids. Let's look at Song Fu. Of course, we already mentioned it. I think there's liver cheese stagnation, so the liver's involved. And it's overacting on the spleen. It's causing spleen chi deficiency. It's also causing a perversion of stomach chi. So it's making stomach chi go in the wrong direction. There you have it. So there's our Zong Fu. Now, for other, a classic example, of course, would be wood overacting on earth. So this is a good way to use our five element diagnosis. And you could say, well, this is a classic wood overacting on earth. Let's erase this and let's talk about our actual diagnosis treatment plan and get into some acupuncture points. Now we must remember the chief complaint, which was abdominal pain. Why? Because we have to, have to, have to always almost like reverse the chief concern. So the chief concern is abdominal pain. So we want to relieve the abdominal pain. The next thing we need to do is we need to soothe liver chi. We can tonify spleen. And we can smooth the stomach chi flow as well. So that it is not going in the wrong direction. So there you have it. We're, our treatment is basically the reverse of everything that is going on. The other thing that might be quite important is the stool. So we've got some loose and watery stool. So in order to have the patient feeling healthy in all ways, shapes and forms, we could also address the bowels. So just thinking about that, we'll put that in brackets. So let's look at some acupuncture points that do all these things. So we can treat locally, of course. So REN12 would be a great acupuncture point that could take care of that mid discomfort. Zhongwan, middle stomach. Then we can use the upper stomach acupuncture point REN13, which would be good. So that would take care of probably a lot of the abdominal pain. Now the abdominal pain, when it gets really bad, remember it moved to the hypochondria, moved to the 
below the rib area, and we've got a great symptomatic pair for this, which is Trip Warmer 6 GB34. We could also treat locally. We could do like a liver 13, which would be front move of spleen. It would help us with our spleen sheet efficiency. And it's on the liver channel, which is great. And we can also use liver 14. Of course, that is the front move collecting point of the liver. Looking at other things, so we're going to soothe the liver chi. Another great soothing the liver chi point is the stream source, liver 3. Tonify spleen chi, spleen 6, stomach 36 combo. Can soothe the stomach chi. Well, front move of stomach, we've already have it here. And influential of Fu is Ren 12. Just want to say influential of Zong is liver 13. So that's going to help that. But we've got perversion. So oftentimes what we can do is we can use a spring acupuncture point to kind of bring things down. So a stomach 44 would be good. And what about this bowel? So we could do stomach 25, which is front move collecting point of large intestine. And that would take care of a lot of these issues, I feel. Now, other acupuncture points may have come to mind, uh, and we can start thinking about the back. So we're going to soothe that liver chi, UB18, tonify the spleen and stomach, 20 and 21. We can start thinking about the bowels, the back shoe of large intestine, the 25. And there we have it. So we've got some good, again, you might think about doing maybe some moxa. You like, might like to do some moxa on Ren 12. Because again, this was kind of like more of like a cold condition. You might like to do some moxa on stomach 36. Got some abdominal pain. Maybe you'd like to do a little bit of Dalian Fa, some massage, some Tui Na. You might like to do some Gua Sha. Some gentle Gua Sha. That sort of thing. So again, we can start looking at our other therapies, our adjunct therapies, and we can start plunking them in here. So hopefully, I haven't confused the heck out of you. And this has been fun for you. It's been super fun for me to look at a couple of case studies and do differentiation and diagnosis. Of course, any questions or concerns, hit me up. You can go to kentonsepsic.com. You can send me a message through the website. You DM me on Instagram. Comment on the bottom of the video. I answer everything. Just want to remind you that safety is king, bedside matters king, and results are king in that order. Thanks for watching this video.